Today, we're going to address the question, should I go to Bible college? We're going to address the pragmatics of this question, the philosophy of my answer to this question, and I hope you can get some good guidance here, especially for high school students who are considering Bible college. Just for some context, I have my bachelor's degree from Moody Bible Institute uh, in Biblical Languages, uh, my MDiv uh, fr uh, from Westminster Theological Seminary, my PhD in Systematic Theology from Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. I also taught in the theology department for three years at Moody Bible Institute uh, while completing my doctorate. And high school students often ask me for advice in preparing for Bible college. Uh, uh, after observing my 2010 graduating class at Moody and the things that they've accomplished, as well as sort of observing the lives of my students as they have gone on to pursue ministry and other careers i i now now i only give one piece of advice to anyone considering bible college and i guarantee you're going to hate this advice especially if you're watching this video here's my advice do not pursue your undergraduate education at a bible college do not do it it is one of the worst decisions a young christian especially a high schooler could make there are several reasons for this. Number one, you will not learn as much as you think. Okay, Moody is one of the best Bible colleges in the world in the company of Bible colleges like Biola and, and Christian universities that offer Bible and theology degrees like Wheaton College, of course, and, and they are all very similar in their quality. And what students could learn in their four years studying the Bible at, a, un, at an undergraduate program like Wheaton or, or Moody or, Bi, or Biola, which are the best for sure, uh, what students could learn in these four years studying there will likely not far outweigh what they could have learned through self-study for four years as Christians while pursuing a bachelor's degree that actually has value in the American job market, okay? So learning Greek and Hebrew no longer requires Bible college attendance, okay? Use Pratico and Van Pelt's uh, 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 Zondervan uh, Greek grammar and, and workbook. It's, it's, it's how I actually retaught myself Hebrew after uh, uh, sort of getting a bit rusty, <laughs> and it's extremely good. It's an extremely good resource. For Greek, you can get the Reading Biblical, or, uh, yeah, Reading Biblical Greek by Constantine Campbell and Richard Gibson, and they have a whole pack with lectures and workbooks and things like that, help you translate through the Book of Mark, take you from zero Greek knowledge to translating the Book of Mark in 16 weeks. And it's a very good, very good resource. You can teach yourself Greek and Hebrew very easily, which is the bulk of what you might get at a good Bible college, right? So, and for theology, most undergraduate uh, level Bible colleges don't actually bring you, they don't really bring you much deeper than like Wayne Grudem's systematic theology level, which is what a lot of Bible college attendees get. That's as deep as they get, which you could easily read for yourself, easily read. And you could even go far beyond that, which is to say that you could bring your theological research to the level of actually reading Herman Boving's Reformed Dogmatics for yourself, which I would absolutely suggest you do. And if you do that, you're really not going to be that far behind somebody who spends four years of their life only doing Bible and theology for their undergraduate and professional development. So number one, you won't learn as much as you think. Number two, good Bible college teachers are actually being phased out. What does this mean? As higher education model changes, uh, most Bible colleges are switching a majority of their course hours to doctoral students who teach adjunct classes. So a lot of the typical stalwart uh, uh, Bible professors and theology professors who have decades of teaching experience, that's not most of the Bible and, and theology education you're even going to be getting at a Bible college, which you might have gotten, you might have gotten good education and good teachers 10, 15 years ago you're not guaranteed that anymore. So in other words, instead of paying a seasoned theologian a $70,000 salary, instead of a Bible college paying a seasoned theologian a good, you know, $70,000 a year salary plus benefits to teach six courses over the course of a year, instead of doing that, what they'll do is they'll pay an army of underqualified doctoral students $2,000 per class with no benefits in order to maintain the same course offerings. And this greatly diminishes course quality and education quality, uh, uh, not only because it removes expertise from a majority of the student experience, but also because adjuncts aren't really fully devoted to their students. And that's what I did for three years. I tried to be as devoted as I could to my students, but I was working other jobs because adjunct work wasn't paying enough. And I was completing my doctorate. Okay. An adjunct professor's primary goal is going to be working 
working several jobs to maintain their family and life and, and also finish their degree and also publishing articles in journals in order to get a full-time job in the future. The, the adjunct uh, professor's class simply is not going to be the priority of that adjunct professor. And uh, 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 yeah, and, and, and most uh, students are at this point guaranteed to get a lot of adjunct professors in the Bible college experience. Uh, adjunct professors are the last people who should be teaching, and yet they are becoming the primary employment strategy of Bible colleges simply to save, save money. Uh, many seasoned Bible college professors are either retiring or seeking employment by like graduate schools or more prestigious seminaries uh, uh, so that they can work with kind of older students and more seasoned and developed with more seasoned and developed aptitude for the material itself. So in short, the pedagogical quality of Bible colleges is drastically dropping. Number three, there is no job for a Bible college degree, not a single job. Many students who seek Bible college degrees because they want to go into full-time Christian ministry. That's why I went to Moody for my undergraduate degree. And it, it, of course, it sounds natural, right? Like aspiring engineers get engineering degrees and aspiring teachers get teaching degrees. Wouldn't aspiring pastors and missionaries, wouldn't they just go to Bible college? And it makes sense, but it, it, is, it is tragically incorrect. Tragically incorrect. What many bright-eyed high schoolers don't realize, and it's very tragic, is that for every Bible college graduate applying to a ministry position, there's someone else applying for the same position who has an MDiv and a lot more ministry experience. You, a Bible, if you're applying to a ministry position straight out of Bible college, you are at the bottom of the pile, as opposed to graduating with an engineering degree or an, if you did well in your accounting degree program or something like that, where you, you're actually having recruiters come to your school and offer you, you know, great salaries to do, to, to start an amazing, a very lucrative career, right? So, so that's not how it works at Bible colleges. That's not how it works at Bible colleges. So the standard degree for full-time employment in Christian ministry is an MDiv. Nobody cares about your Bible college bachelor's degree. You might as well have your picture with Goofy from Disneyland because a hiring committee is going to value those two things exactly the same. So granted, there are some Bible college degrees, you know, like those you can get from like Moody or Biola, they are better than most MDiv programs, but it will still be just a meaningless to most hiring committees in the real world. People just don't care about Bible college degrees and they are, they are in the job marketplace. I'm, I'm sad to say it because I love Bible college. I love Moody. Uh, uh, I loved my experience there. It's a wonderful, magical place, but the degrees they give out are, are not worth the paper that they're printed on. And, and they are only valuable if they are um, accredited so that you can claim to have a bachelor's degree when you apply to a master's program, which could actually give you an employable degree, maybe if you chose a different route, right? But even, even this kind of serves to highlight the more basic point that you should have pursued an employable degree in the first place. So there's no job for a Bible college degree. Fourth, you could be spending this time pursuing an employable degree. Now, this, so, so, so there's no job for a Bible college degree, but fourth point is to say, uh, well, these four years are very valuable and what you don't see is the lost cost of uh, uh, actually not pursuing a degree in, of between the ages of, for example, 18 to 21 for those four years, which you could actually be getting something employable. So let's say that you are convinced, totally convinced that God is calling you to full-time ministry. That's fine. Many high school seniors feel this call from God, and it, it, it may be real. I, I certainly felt this call from God. My career goal from the time I was very small was to join the Army, and I spent my life devoted to the goal. I grew up right near West Point Military Academy, and my life was devoted to that goal in order to apply to West Point Military Academy, did Civil Air Patrol, all that stuff. I was gung-ho. I was ready to go. But when I became a Christian in high school, I felt a strong call to pursue Christian ministry instead. And so I, I applied to Moody instead. And I greatly regret that decision. It was a bad decision. Now, I'm not saying that I dislike my life. I love my life. But I should have gone to West Point. I should have applied to West Point or Citadel. I should have gone or, or even just a state college and gone to ROTC. I should have stuck to my goal because, and, and I should have had an adult. And this is not me bucking responsibility. I take full responsibility for my life. But an adult should have told me I was making a bad choice. Rather, I had a bunch of Christian adults applauding, clapping, glad handing me, hey, you're going off to, you know, because it looks good for their church, right? So, so when I graduated, I could get an employable ministry degree, like an MDiv from 
you know, a reputable seminary, even if, even if I went to West Point, right? I could have still got my MDiv and gone into ministry, right? But then I would have a West Point degree, right? Well, I'd have to serve in the army for five years, right? But, but then I could still get my MDiv later because a bachelor's degree in biblical languages means nothing. And I ended up needing to pursue my MDiv, regardless of the fact that I had already had four years of training in theology and the languages. I had a buddy that I went to Westminster Seminary with for my MDiv, and uh, he got his like business degree or something like that. And now he's a professor at one of the biggest uh, seminaries in the country. He's an esteemed professor. And we went through our MDivs together. And I didn't make it into the professorship, and that was my goal, because because he started at at Westminster with nothing, and he went up from there. Because you know what, me having a Bible college degree, it gave me an edge, not enough of an edge, not enough. It wasn't worth wasting those four years. Pursuing an employable undergraduate degree does two things. First, it safeguards against the possibility that you may not be called to ministry, okay? Don't be so arrogant as to think that your certainty is a guarantee of God's call. That's pride. That is arrogance. You could be wrong. You might not be called to ministry. Either way, you won't have lost any time or insight by pursuing an undergraduate education in engineering or accounting or teaching or a STEM field, right? Get a degree that guarantees you a job and study theology in your free time so that in case you realize, ah, I don't think God has called me to full-time ministry. I think I just had a little too much coffee on that youth retreat. Okay, good. Now you still have a job. Now you can start a family if you want to. (laughs) And after four years in college, you'll be just as theologically educated if you just do self-study and infinitely more employable. Second, pursuing a marketable undergraduate degree instead of a Bible college degree makes you a more attractive hire for ministry organizations down the road. Actually makes you more likely to get a ministry job because if you major, you should major in marketing or business or coding or engineering, you can translate all of those majors into ministry, into higher ability down the road if you want to go into full-time ministry. You'll probably need to get your MDiv anyway for any of these positions or an MA in theology or something like that and have a combination of theological training with a marketable job skill that will actually empower you to outcompete other MDivs without those marketable skills besides theological training. Because even if you do get your MDiv after Bible college, you're probably going to be outcompeted by somebody else who has a better undergraduate degree and their MDiv. Pursue a marketable undergraduate degree, not a Bible college undergraduate degree. Get an undergraduate degree that guarantees you a high paying job. If, if you are inclined to shrug off this advice because of a sense of urgency, I would caution you to inquire whether your sense of urgency to go to Bible college isn't in fact just arrogance and impatience. And as I've explained, there isn't anything you can get from Bible college that you can't get from being a faithful Christian college student training to be something that makes real money. Okay. Either way, even if you do go into ministry, those marketable skills are equally marketable in the ministry job hunt. And the ministry job market is currently bursting at the seams with overtrained, over-credentialed people with multiple degrees. There aren't a lot of ministry jobs out there. The ministry job market is very competitive. It is low paying. It is a soft skills, who you know economy. And it is one of the worst industries that you could enter. I'm not saying there aren't good people in that industry. There are great people in, in the Christian ministry industry. But like I said, it is very competitive, very low paying, very nepotistic. And the the beautiful thing about young high schoolers is that you can do ministry and even enter into full-time ministry much more easily with a much more financially secure path that enables you to support a family if you choose not to go to Bible college. There's literally no net positive from going to Bible college. None. And I don't say that gleefully. I say it regretfully. The people who need to hear this message most actually aren't high schoolers. They are pastors who foolishly advise high schoolers to go to Bible college. It is a selfish, narcissistic, ignorant, misguiding, and irresponsible compulsion to advise high schoolers to go to Bible college. You should not do it. Pastors who do so need to become informed and stop doing this immediately. It sounds good to have a young person from your church go to college, but you are actually robbing them of an opportunity to become unemployable, 
productive member of your society in order for a fleeting sense of vanity about the efficacy of your church's youth ministry or whatever it is that you get from a person in your church going to Bible college or going to Moody, right? Pastors, your primary advice to students who want to go into ministry should be this. Get a high-paying, employable, hireable undergraduate degree at a low-cost school. Get plugged into a good local church in the area. Spend the next four years of your life theologically educating yourself in that context if that's what you want to do. That is, that is the very best advice. And in fact, the only advice that pastors should be giving to high schoolers, uh, to college-bound high schoolers. Do not rob children of their opportunity to become financially stable adults. Do not indulge their fantasy that attending Bible college indicates a career track in ministry. It does not. It certainly, most certainly does not. Most of my peers in Bible college and most of my students from Bible college who didn't pursue a master's degree are now stuck in low-paying shift work positions even eight and ten years later. Listen, I love Moody Bible Institute. It was a beautiful place of spiritual formation for me. But I could have received the same thing from a good local church and campus ministry at a well-funded and effective state college. And I, and I need to say this, that the Bible college is a professionally useless institution. The very institution of the Bible college in the 21st century is a scam. 100% a scam. Students who throw away four years of their lives at these institutions will miss out a very formative four years of their lives financially, career-wise, uh, 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 and personally, uh, for which they will be paying for the rest of their lives. That doesn't mean they can't course correct, but those are four very formative, very important years for you personally and for your career. And they should not be spent indulging a fantasy that a Bible college will somehow set you off in a good career in ministry. Most certainly is not the best way to get set off in a good career in ministry. And you know what? I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be a jerk. No one's going to tell you that. When I was at Moody, I had several people, several superiors of mine look me dead in the eye and say, you know what, Paul, you are never going to get hired. Uh, uh, here as a full-time professor at Moody because you're a white male. I could have got super mad about that. I, out I could have said, I out-published everybody here. I, you know, I'm a better teacher than everybody here. I have more credentials. You know, I'm going to have, by the, by the time I graduate, I'll, I, I will be more professionally accomplished as a theologian than, you know, 90% of my colleagues here. No. I, don't, I didn't need to say it. You know why? I was thankful they told me. I was thankful they told me so I could shift gears. I was thankful they told me. Everyone will celebrate a student from high school who's going to Bible college. Everyone will celebrate them. Even their parents think that they're pursuing an employable ministry track. Everybody's wrong. All of those people are, are wrong. They are mistaken. The institution of the Bible college itself in the 21st century is a farce. It, it is a relic of the early 20th, late 19th century, and it no longer works. If you are considering attending Bible college for an undergraduate degree, you very much need to change your mind and avoid that path. To eschew this wisdom would be utter foolishness with a high cost. Do not make this mistake. Not going to Bible college doesn't mean you don't, have, you don't get to go into ministry. Quite the opposite. In fact, going to Bible college is a pretty sure way that you won't make it into full-time ministry. Get an employable degree. Become an engineer. Then... Get your MDiv. A bachelor's in biblical studies will get you nowhere. If you are called to ministry, you will still be called to ministry after college, at which time you'll have the time to get the sort of master's degree which is actually hireable even within a ministry context, which is an MDiv or uh, an advanced theological MA or counseling MA or whatever it is, but it will be a, pre a prerequisite for pastoral ministry. I've seen so many Bible college graduates end up in coffee and end up in retail, and it's really tragic. You will end up that way unless you're extremely, extremely perseverant. And you know what? Even if you're going into ministry, Bible college is one of the worst ways to get your start. Don't get a Bible college degree. Study theology in your free time. Plug into a local church. Learn Greek and Hebrew in your free time. It's easier than you think. And if God has called you to ministry and you also plan to have a family, then getting an employable bachelor's degree and a prestigious MDiv, th this path 
will be the most preparatory and godly choice that will honor both the excellence of God's call on your life to ministry, as well as the weight of responsibility that will one day come with being a husband and a father or a wife and a mother.